Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we're looking at a new German battleship. And uh, even if it's a premium, German battleships I just cannot <laughs> ignore. This is the Brandenburg. It's a tier 8 premium ship. Of course, the Brandenburg never existed. First of all, um, well, this is not entirely correct. The Brandenburg did exist, just not this one. So, the actual Brandenburg was the very first pre-dreadnought battleship that was built for the Imperial German Navy somewhere in the late 1800s. And uh, as, as such, as a pre-dreadnought, had a wild assortment of all kinds of calibers of guns scattered all across the ship, but uh, was the lead ship of her class, I think, of four battleships, and uh, ended up to being sent to dealing with the Boxer Rebellion in China. Now, given that these things were not particularly fast by the time they actually made their way through the Suez Canal and around the south, uh, the south end of India and all the way there, uh, the Boxer Rebellion was over <laughs> and then they had to go back again, which um, yeah, made that whole thing rather ineffective. Uh, at the time of the First World War, these ships were pretty much obsolete and uh, I think were either in reserve or de uh, used as coastal defense at some point and the Brandenburg herself was scrapped. Uh, once you know there was no further purpose for the ship, but uh, that's not the Brandenburg we're seeing here. The Brandenburg we're seeing here is um, well, technically, uh, it it says it was a Bismarck-ish design, and uh, if we were looking a little bit closer and compare her actually to the Bismarck, that sort of sort of uh, sort of matches. What is different is that she has different guns. Now the Bismarck gets the 380 uh, millimeter guns. This thing gets the Odin's 305 millimeter guns. These guns existed as a design draft for things like uh, coastal defense or commerce raiders, according to the encyclopedia that I have laying around here behind me. Uh, Campbell's uh, wo uh, Naval Weapons of World War II, that is. But uh, not much is known about these guns and they certainly were never made. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start comparing this a little bit. You know, the obvious, the obvious comparison and the big question that uh, was at the forefront of my mind when I first got the ship to review was, how does she compare to the Odin? Because the Odin at tier eight is, <laughs> is probably my favorite ship in this game at this point and uh, is an absolute blast to play. It's a perfect battle cruiser. Extremely powerful ship. So how do the two compare, given that they're both on tier 8 and the Brandenburg has the Odin's guns, more or less? Now, the very first thing that stands out is that uh, the Odin does... Well, well, the Odin gets the secondary overload. The Brandenburg gets two defensive AA. Other than that, it's the same setup. So that's already interesting. Uh, she does get more hit points than the Odin. Odin does not get an awful lot of hit points, which means you do need to be a little bit careful and aware of how you're playing. It's it's lost less than a... It, it's more a long sword than a sledgehammer, <laughs> let me put it that way. But um, armor stats are technically the same as we find on Bismarck, uh, on the Odin and on the Brandenburg. Although these are only the stats that we can see. Uh, the actual armor thickness might be slightly different in-game, just without an effect on these stats, and we don't really know. Uh, she certainly does take a decent amount of damage from, from enemy shell fire. So, uh, playstyle-wise, I feel more on the side of the Odin, uh, slightly lighter armored, than on the side of, of things like the Bismarck. She doesn't handle quite as well as the Odin. The Odin has a 12.6 second base turn time, which is which is marvelous for for a battleship. She does get uh, the Brandenburg does get a, the uh, the higher traverse speed once you actually have the rudder shifted, but has an almost three second longer um, turn time on the rudder, which is quite significant. So handles a bit more like the actual big the actual big boys or girls rather. And here we are with the three hundred five millimeter L fifty six, so fifty six caliber in length, uh, C thirty nine, so the nineteen thirty nine design of these guns. Now these are, for all intents and purposes, the same guns as on the Odin, only that Brandenburg gets four turrets. Uh, so an additional rear turret. So there's a, there's a Y turret on that thing, compared to the Odin, which only has the A, B and X turret. Damage and everything else, output is the same, slightly longer range and a slower reload. But you see, the thing is, <laughs> it's not about the main guns. I mean, they are nice, don't get me wrong. You might be thinking that 305mm is a bit underpowered and you should be firing high explosive. No, you don't really want to do that. 
uh, this is German 305 millimeter. You can perfectly fine uh, do pretty large amounts of damage to enemy things, but you might also have uh, like ranged hits that don't don't really do an awful lot because it's a relatively low caliber. The secondaries are, for all intents and purposes, the same as on the Odin. So you hang on a minute, Terry. You said they're the same. They're not, right? The Odin gets two triple turrets, and the Brandenburg gets six twin turrets. Yes, but. <laughs> Hear me out. The Odin's 150mm main secondaries are center mounted, which means the Odin's the Odin can swing these 150s in, in either direction. The Brandenburgs are side mounted, just like on Bismarck and Tirpitz. So she can always only ever get six guns on target at the same point in time. Uh, you could say, oh yes, but if you suddenly need to fire at something on the right side of the ship, then uh, you can swing the guns around quicker because, you know, they're on the other side. Not really that much either because I'll, I'll show you in a second what I mean, but because the guns are trying to swing the other side and then they're stuck, like they bump into the superstructure at some point and then they can't, but they're, they're in a parallel position towards the ship rather than a 45 degree or 90 degree angle off it where they would be useful. But yeah, so in effect, the 150s are, um, are, are technically the same, although they are... 55 length and 60 length on the Odin. I don't know if, if there's an actual in-game impact over this. This is just a cosmetic naming. Here comes a, sort of the first big difference, in my opinion. Uh, the Odin has the Grosser Kurfürst secondaries, if you didn't know. <laughs> yes, these are tier 10 auto secondaries. She doesn't get as quite as many of them, but <laughs> and I think the base range is a little bit shorter, but these are technically the GK's... Uh, Auto secondaries, the 128 millimeters, with a 4.5 second base reload and a 6.2 kilometer base range on the auto secondaries. The auto secondaries on the Odin are absolutely hilariously crazy. The Brandenburg only gets the standard 105 dual purpose that you also find on things like the Bismarck. So while they're good, they're nowhere near as good as the things that you get on the Odin. She gets the same torpedo set, the uh, the two quadruplet torpedo tubes, one on each side. So same with everything, the very good range on these. So that, that's the thing. And uh, she, well, has, I wouldn't necessarily say a lot better AA. I mean, obviously, yes, we get 100 points additional on the large caliber AA, but the small caliber AA uh, at the same time is, is having a slightly shorter range. But she does get the defensive AA skill which uh, means she can shoot down her fair share of aircraft, actually. And con concealment-wise, they're roughly on par. So, um, what, what was I saying about these secondaries? Well, uh, let's let's have a see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so you, you see these, these three the twin turrets on the side here, right? Um, that this is... Uh, hang on, that's the Odin. That's, that's the wrong ship. I was like, hang on, why, why are they center mounted? And what are these? No, no, I'm looking at the wrong ship. That's why. Okay, here we go. That's better. Now we're looking at the right ship. Okay, once again, you, you see these you see these large uh, twin uh, twin mounts. These are the 150 millimeter secondaries, the main ones. Now, if you are pointing your guns, let's say, to this side of the ship, then the other the secondaries on the other side are going to be just position just like this flush against the superstructure because they are literally trying to turn to where you're you're pointing your your cursor but you they can't because well they only turn this this far so if you need to switch they then need to uh, they then need to start turning again in order to get the right 90 degree angle or wherever you want to fire at to hit things on the other side so you don't necessarily just because you have secondaries on each side get them immediately ready to fire and that's true for all the ships uh, that that we have in the game whereas the odin now we're looking at the odin the odin has the 150 center line mounted as you can see there's the triple turret forward and a triple turret in the rear and these things swing both ways pretty much yes yes i know which means that you can always get six on target on either side, but you do have to swing the turret around. So that 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 is that being one difference. Now, this see the thing about the Odin, the thing that makes the Odin really good, and I realize we're once again looking at the wrong ship. The thing that makes the Odin really good is the combination of high maneuverability, uh, absolutely hilariously murderous secondaries, and I am including the auto secondaries here. Um, 
German battleships are often not about the main guns. So the Brandenburg <laughs> has got more main guns. Now I'm not complaining, mind you, because uh, these are not bad guns. And uh, having 12 of them is, is not a bad thing per se. But it does mean that oftentimes you need to give a little bit more broadside as you otherwise would in the more battle cruisery Odin. And um, if you're rushing, then you are going to find that uh, you, you will get shot a bit more because you know you are showing more side. And she doesn't get the hilarious auto secondaries that you get on the Odin. And uh, so, is this, is this a good ship or a bad ship? We'll get to that. But first, let's look at the rest of the. Uh, she she is not an Odin. <laughs> That thing still holds a special place in my heart. But um, let's look at the, the setup that we can get here. So obviously, I mean, you could get the uh, improved belt armor for more damage reduction, more citadel protection. Uh, but, but I mean, you could, right? You could say, oh, it's more about the secondary, uh, it's more about the main guns. It's got 12 main guns and I'm just going to be using the ship more on long range. But you, I think you'd still be sort of wasting her potential. But if you're not happy with the more aggressive uh, pushy rushy play style and playing within six kilometer range to get the secondaries on target um, then uh, uh, the second would be the better choice if you are comfortable with that which gives you reload time for both the auto secondaries and the manual secondaries and then obviously the uh, second root battery mod 2 I mean you could go with the first and just ignore the auto secondaries but I prefer to have the range on both of these and the dispersion buff on both of, both of these. So that's a that's a good skill to take. Uh, that's a good module to take. Now, talking about fires, <laughs> the one thing that German battleships do not have is any resistance to being set on fire whatsoever. The Brandenburg does have a relatively decent AA and is capable of defending herself to some degree against um, against any incoming enemy aircraft, but uh, I still maintain that the deck protection mod might not be a terrible choice. You could obviously also take the more canonical uh, propulsion modification on, on, this, on this slot. The third slot obviously goes into steering. Now that said, we, we get down to a 13.3 second turn time on the Brandenburg compared to a under 11 second turn time on the Odin. The Odin is having the edge here in maneuverability. And also the Odin is a is a smaller target, sort of. She's quite flat and um, is quite maneuverable and give, you're not so tempted to go, to go on broadside to get the rear turret on target. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, that's that setup. I have put, uh, I have put a, um, a level eight commander in here. You, actually can use the battlefield support skill relatively successfully here because you get both a sonar and an air defense alert which is good because it means you can be a bit more you know um, lenient with your sonar usage i do have the high alert rather than the artillery maintenance which is usually my skill of choice just because the amount of fires that get set on these ships is just uh, ridiculous. Also, uh, it might have a, a certain thing might have influenced me because I was constantly up against one or two Disavan Provincian when I was when I was playing when I was test playing the ship, and my gosh, these things are annoying. <laughs> uh, the air defense expert skill actually makes sense on this ship, although uh, if you're concerned about uh, about hit points, the victorious charge might not be a bad choice either. Uh, she does get three three precise aims. And I have opted to use the survival list instead because she doesn't quite have the same, uh, she doesn't have the same hit, hit point pool that you find on the Turpets and the Bismarck. She's got more than the Odin, but it's sort of in between the two of them. Uh, recon skill for the faster cooldown and sonar duration. Um, obviously the marksman skill for the precise aim. And uh, most definitely the extinguisher. It is very, very tempting to take adrenaline rush, but... <laughs> My gosh, the times I've been on triple permafire, it's just not fun. Anyway, uh, you would definitely want the close quarters combat expert in the next tier. And then uh, then obviously the APCS for uh, in the higher tiers. Right, uh, what would be a German battleship without the historical camo? Actually, there is a bundle, right? Uh, an anime bundle out right now. So let's take a look at that quickly just to get it out of the way. So if you would, if you would absolutely like to paint a silver-haired anime girl at the back of your German battleship and to have some form of 
chicken in the front or whatever it's meant to be then uh, yeah be my guest it will give you hit points it will give you range better dispersion and torpedo damage reduction or you know you could take the historical camouflage which makes a lot more sense uh, at least for how I play these ships, which gives you better hit points, better range, and better secondary range, which is what you want on these ships, right? Uh, and the uh, and it gives better torpedo range, which is also something that you really, really want to have. So, but yeah, um, if you're so inclined, feel free to do that. Uh, otherwise, this would be the historical camo. And yes, I'm going to play this with the historical camo because, um, because I want to. <laughs> this is a German battleship, and I know that if I was going to get my hands on one of these, uh, she would be in line for receiving her historical camo very, very quickly. All righties. So, uh, what do we have? Do we have a? Do we have a? Do we have another Odin? Do we have a worthy, a worthy competitor to the Odin? Let's try it out. In the first battle, we are bottom tier in epicenter on Pacific Islands, and we're up against an Izumo, Richelieu, Vladivostok, a Kansas, a Hipper, Jutland, and a lightning. Now, like I mentioned, uh, she doesn't have she doesn't have quite as many hit points as let's say a Bismarck. And uh, all, even though the armor looks identical on the stats that we can see, doesn't necessarily mean it's identical on the hidden stats or whatever in-game mechanics are running. So you do have to be a little bit careful with your with your pushing on occasion and not just blindly run into things. I mean, you can, <laughs> but uh, she, uh, uh, she she seems to be taking a bit more damage than I'm used to on, say, Bismarck, although I haven't played Bismarck in quite a while. Anyway, we're in Epicenter, so uh, playstyle-wise, a bit more like Odin. Um, and until you know where the enemy team is and you spot an opening, you kind of hold back a little bit, and that's where the precise aim comes in, such that you can actually land a fair amount of, uh, of hits on uh, on target at range if you need to until you have a good overview where the enemy team is positioned. Now, obviously, we're going to be contesting the uh, the center island there, which is where the destroyers are going to be, so that a Hipper especially and the Ibuki are probably going to have their hands full in support. Not sure where the Jutland is going. Uh, into the center cup, if you would mind. Ah, oh, well, it's our only destroyer, so why would he go in there? Uh, anyway, we are spotted and we're not spotting anything else and the center cup is being capped So yes, that's why I'm stopping because I know that there's enemy destroyers out there. Okay, Vladivostok is spotted Now like I said, it is tempting. It's very tempting to get uh, to turn the ship, ship to turn the ship such that <laughs> English Terry uh, you get your rear guns on target and this by the way is 305 millimeter German armor piercing at 11 kilometers <laughs> Okay, there's the enemy Jutland. Uh, she's just in secondary range. <laughs> in the in the Odin, she'd probably be in auto secondary range by now, but uh, seems to be sitting sitting rather still there. So um, uh, we we get some shots in with the 305s, and uh, yeah, that's another advantage of the 305s that uh, they may or may not actually over penetrate destroyers. Sometimes you do get full uh, full pens in. Not sure what he's doing there. I'm running the hydro just to make sure. Uh, just to make sure that I see any kind of torpedoes coming. The Vladivostok doesn't want to fight me anymore, and there's a Kansas over there. Our destroyer has has absolutely no interest in getting into the center cup, but I don't want to push here with uh, with an enemy destroyer sitting around, although one of them has died, and I haven't been paying attention which one it was. I'm getting shot at by the Kansas, but um, at this range, I'm, I'm not particularly afraid of it. So... Uh, given that we're all clustered up here, and the enemy team is now taking the outer ring as well as the inner ring, we are going to be uh, uh, starting to lose some points here. And uh, I figured it's about time that we start doing something about these ships over there. So there's Kansas, and there's the Vladivostok from earlier, who isn't quite paying attention to um, to what's going on in the rest of the, the, the game. Now, there is a destroyer threat from the center. But it's only one destroyer, and uh, we do have the cruisers being relatively aggressive, actually. So I figure, okay, let's let's go for it. Oh, and this is interesting. The um, the uh, I think it's the hippo on our on our team is capturing the center cup, so there's no destroyer in there, which means I can go. Okay, let's go <laughs> and uh, let's focus down at Kansas uh, because the hippo is capping, and it wouldn't be if there was an enemy destroyer in there. And there's no one else in there to uh, to run that. So Kansas is overshooting. There's just a couple of overpens in the superstructure. And yeah, like I said, these might just be 305s, but um, uh, just in case there is the destroyer is lurking anywhere, I'm just going to use the sonar again. Uh, but um, 
Uh, this Kansas is now has now run out of friends because the Vladivostok has buggered off. So um, we can dismantle this guy since we're at it, and then maybe that frees up our destroyer to to more useful duties. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying right now just to be a bit big target for the Kansas and to distract him from that uh, from that destroyer that's running. But the destroyer seems to be running somewhere completely different. So I figured, you know what? I have torpedoes on both sides. Uh, guns on the right. Let's start opening up the Vladi, and um, with the enemy destroyer is is spotted. He's on the other end of the map, so there's no destroyer danger, which means I can now um, do a do a, 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 cent a center line rush <laughs> and shoot at both the Kansas and the Vladivostok. So uh, and there's there's still the Richelieu over there, but um, uh, I can distract these two, and our our cruisers can dominate the center. And uh, obviously, uh, not not all sh not all players are going to be aware that uh, that these things have torpedoes, right? Because this this is a pre-release recording, so nobody knows that yet. Uh, now that's the auto secondaries opening up in the Kansas. Uh, I don't need to point my guns that way. Uh, ouch! That was a pretty good hit from the Vladivostok. So uh, I don't think I'll need my torpedoes on the Kansas. The auto secondaries can probably finish that thing off. Uh, yep, <laughs> there she goes. I mean, the destroyer had his chance, right? So now it's just up against uh, us against the Vladivostok. And um, uh, once again, ideally, uh, I don't know where the destroyer is. I don't have eyes on him. So once again, torpedo. Um, once again, uh, oh, there he is. Okay, uh, there might be torpedoes in the water, so just be careful. A hydro up and um, a little bit. And I am running reasonably low on hit points. So uh, until we can we can do, get another heal in, uh, maybe I'll just turn around and uh, not chase the Vladivostok because there's also once again our destroyer who is say exploring the edges of the map uh, that the Vladivostok doesn't necessarily know is there so if I can just if I can distract him uh, yeah there's the Jutland if I can distract him uh, long enough for the Jutland to do something about him <laughs> then uh, then he, he might not even realize that he's being targeted by the Jutland until of course the Jutland does something stupid and starts firing at him with his guns or something but uh, for the meantime, I can just disengage here. Oh yeah, there, there's, there the Jutland is, make, making his presence known. Uh, I don't know if he's got torpedoes away. Should have, couldn't have chance to torpedo anything else. But um, yeah, the Vladivostok is very determined to sink me, but now there's also an Alsace, which means um, we're still even on kills, but the Vladivostok is dead. So um, let's see if I can take him down, because uh, Jutland, you had your chance. You could have done that ages ago. There's a Richelieu. And that's a dead Vladivostok. And we are, we've used all our heals. We're on 10,000 hit points. Perfect. This is how you want to be in a German battleship. Now, the problem is there's at least one destroyer around there still. And there's a Richelieu. So, uh, fortunately, we don't need to we don't need to get the center cut because um, our team already has that. And yeah, the Richie is shooting at me and Richie's hurt. So it's about time to turn the ship around, get him to overshoot and get uh, and bugger off out of here because we've got this on points. And I can also sort of, you know, kite away and uh, uh, just just use my, my, my rear guns. This is something, admittedly, that you can't easily do in an Odin because you only have one, guns to, one gun to the rear. But, um, yeah, the Richie does not get me anymore at this range. This thing isn't, that, isn't particularly uh, precise and I can still sink a couple of shots in him. But, yeah, I, this, is, this is what I mean with... Um, with the wait for the opportune moment when you want to push and then uh, disengage if you're if you're done pushing and uh, do a lot of damage as you go sort of play style which is slightly different from the uh, from the more uh, bigger hit po hit point pool or bigger health pool ships like the um, like the turpits and the and the Bismarck herself let's go again now I do have to apologize because I missed the, for some reason the recording didn't start, I missed the uh, battle opening screen, but I think it's, it was a 5v5 and uh, we are up against carriers here, so it is cage, uh, as you can see there's a carrier on our side and it's a tier 8 battle because there are tier 7 ships in here. So uh, yeah, once again, uh, there's a destroyer in the enemy team, how do you... How do you play? How do you play the ship just like you would play the Odin in the opening stages? You have to be a bit careful. You have to preserve your health, and uh, you have to choose your moment. The one thing that you can do in the Brandenburg that you can't easily do in the Odin is park yourself next to a Brooklyn <laughs> and switch on the defensive AA, and uh, actually do a really, really decent amount of damage against uh, against enemy aircraft. So there they come. 
Uh, they have taken a bit of a detour, so I was a little bit early with switching that on. And uh, I think they're not actually targeting us, but um, uh, they, they're flying over us. So they go three, they go four, they go five, <laughs> they go six aircraft shot down. <laughs> and uh, there's a Gasconia for us to shoot at. Now, the bots, there, there are two bots in, a, in each team, so they're obviously rushing forward. Uh, there comes the bot, uh, bot Amagi on our side. And uh, yeah, that was a decent uh, 7k on the Gasconia for, for a salvo. But uh, this is about as far forward as we want to go because, well, destroyers are existing and we're holding the cup. There's no need to rush forward and waste your ship. So we're just going to... Yep, there's the enemy Akatsuki. I don't really have angles on him because I am reversing a little bit. Uh, the, the Akatsuki is going to be busy anyway with um, with the bot, uh, bot battleship that is sailing around there. So. Uh, we're just clearing this out right now, and yeah, the Brooklyn's doing the is is doing the right thing and it's taking the Akatsuki under fire. And uh, even though you don't have the Odin's absolutely hilarious auto secondaries, you still got a decent amount of um, of guns and second and 150 millimeter secondaries that you can use, even at that range, uh, to to do some decent some decent damage. And yes, I could switch over to the high explosive for the mains, but oftentimes with the 305s, it's not worth it against destroyers because. Uh, you will find that sometimes you actually get full pens and I think he just got away with like almost no hit points Which is a shame really, but uh, we've got plenty of targets to shoot at. There's a uh, our Brooklyn is taking a central position Around the island that is extremely brave given that he has no torpedoes and that there's a Vittorio Veneto out there So uh, probably the first thing that we need to take care of um, Let's see if we can scare that thing away a little bit, but uh, there's a bot Colorado in the center and obviously uh, the Brooklyn not having any torpedoes, and yeah, that was disappointing. We might have to help him against that thing, so torpedoes out, and um, and let's just get a couple of shots into the into the uh, bow, se bow section, and then uh, help the Brooklyn with destroying that thing, just so he doesn't get smacked in the side, because uh, even though it's a bot, uh, bots are perfectly capable of doing that sort of thing. Okay, so that thing is dead, which means that... Uh, I will be uh, no. Well, we even on kills. One of ours got killed as well. Yeah, we actually lost our Gasconia. So now it's just Brooklyn, myself, and our crew and our destroyer against the full health Gasconia and the full health Vittorio Veneto. Uh, Veneto is the bigger threat. Gasconia is the easier to kill, in my opinion, at this point. So I'm angling in against the Veneto. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's why, because <laughs> the Frenchman doesn't have the greatest amount of armor. And if I can get into torpedo range of that thing, while keeping an eye on the Vittorio Veneto and the carrier, uh, I can I can give our Benson a little bit of AA support, hopefully, if he stays close. And um, the Gasconia gets sandwiched, so let's try to... Yeah, there come... Did we get a torpedo hit? Uh, no, I think we didn't, unless I missed it somewhere. Because uh, there's so many things going on, but... Um, uh, yeah, the, the Gascon. Oh, there's the Akatsuki. Oh, dang it. Okay, we need to kill that Gasconia first, but I also need to worry about the Akatsuki right now. So, Gasconia, kill. That should think Is that thing dead? No, it's not yet dead. Okay, secondaries can kill that. Uh, I don't have torpedo angles at the Veneto. There she goes. Secondaries have killed it. I am going to take a couple of torps from the Akatsuki, which is unfortunate. Could have done without that, but. Um, now, uh, now you're out of torpedoes, <laughs> and you are, you are in range of all my guns. So uh, now it's just a matter of getting that thing killed while not uh, trying not to be killed by the enemy carrier in return. And yeah, the Vittorio Veneto has found the Brooklyn, and the Brooklyn appears to be in, uh, under the impression that he has, he has to fight fight the Veneto in a point blank uh, fight. This is not going to end well for him. Unfortunately, so that's one's dead, but the carrier is under threat from the destroyer and we are uh, a, a very comfortable almost 400 points ahead So I don't have an awful lot of concerns that this is still going wrong Especially now that the Akatsuki is dead and they're down to two ships Now uh, here we have the illustrious Now the illustrious there are two minutes left in this battle the enemy team cannot win on points anymore They have to kill us all uh, they've started with the Brooklyn and our Benson hasn't moved in the last two minutes or so. I think our Benson may have gone AFK. So it's just the carrier and me, which means um, if our carrier isn't utterly stupid, then he should be able to uh, he should be able to uh, stay out of sight at least, uh, unless the friend the enemy carrier is spotting him. Uh, ouch, that hurt from the Veneto, but I need to get that carrier killed. Not because he's the bigger threat at the moment, the Veneto is, but because he can spot our carrier. 
And uh, there's enough time for the Victoria Veneto to kill our carrier if he's not careful. And yes, there's, uh, there are more planes coming in. Okay, uh, it's another fire. Uh, there might be there might be torpedo planes in the, in the air, so I am not going to dumb on that. And yes, it looks like our Benson is, a, is gone AFK. So that carrier needs to die because he has a chance of actually spotting our carrier. And I might die here to Veneto that I just couldn't get around to killing. <laughs> Uh, it's just that if um, uh, it could have gone the other way if I hadn't focused on the carrier. Anyway, uh, because yeah, Veneto seems to be not that easy to kill either. Anyway, we need to kill that carrier and we need to kill him pronto. I'm going to go down. Benson is AFK. Uh, someone, someone's going to kill the Benson. But we are leading on points. We just have to make sure that our carrier survives. So if we can get these, keep these people busy. And yes, the en enemy carrier is down, so no spotting. Uh, and there's, there come the shots from the Veneto, he can lock this island, he still gets me, but that's okay, because... Uh, and Benson is still alive, the AFK Benson seems to be still alive, for some reason. But, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be enough, because even if he gets the Benson, uh, our carrier survives. And that was kind of, uh, yeah, our Ark Royal has survived, because he hasn't moved the whole game. I don't think he would have been capable of actually dodging the, or running away from the fire of the uh, Vittorio Veneto. So, uh, making sure that our carrier doesn't get spotted <laughs> sort of was kind of my primary concern here. And yeah, the Veneto has still killed the Benson, but because our carrier survived, we have managed to still get this game across the line. So this is, uh, this feels just like the Odin. <laughs> it's the sort of thing you do in the Odin. Now, is the Brandenburg as good or better than the Odin? I would personally say no. I think she's a very, very good tier eight battle cruiser. Um, she is not quite as good as the Odin because of the Odin's absolutely hilarious uh, tier 10 auto secondaries that she gets. She is still a very, very good ship. And if you don't have an Odin, so I would say if you have an Odin and you would like another one, <laughs> because for some reason one is in the uh, you'll be you'll be right at home. If you always wanted to do something about carriers <laughs> while being in an Odin, you'll be right at home. If you don't have an Odin and you have no chance of getting one and you want one that is almost as good, then uh, this is a good choice. And uh, if you're just generally liking German battleships or battle cruisers, if you like the Scharnhorst and you would like uh, you would like something similar, good ship, and just like the Odin. So very good ship. I personally won't be getting her because. I already have the Odin and um, I feel like it's not that different. I might as well play Odin uh, if I'm going, but if I didn't have the Odin, I personally would seriously consider getting this ship. So there you go. There you have it. That's it for today. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you next time.